Hello. Today on All About Canadian Books, it's Love, Death, Life, and Redemption with award-winning playwright Paul David Power. But before I speak with Paul, please hit that subscribe button. And if you love books, be sure to come back because on the second and fourth week of every month on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I post my author interviews. Yes, that's right. Come back. <laughs> <laughs> Today, my guest is award-winning playwright, Paul David Power. Today, we'll be chatting about his published play, Crippled, and it was um, published by Breakwater Books, and it was shortlisted for the 2021 Governor General's Award, Literary Award, excuse me, in drama. So congratulations, Paul. Welcome uh, to All About Canadian Books. And for our viewers, if you have not heard, Crippled is a story about love, death, life, and redemption. It will make you cry, it will make you laugh, and you will walk away with a new perspective about what, about life and what matters. And I cried. <laughs> I definitely cried. <laughs> welcome, 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 Paul. Oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. It is my absolute pleasure. So, are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Paul, Crippled is a stage play and now a book, as you know, and it's about your experience as a person living with a disability and the sudden loss of your beloved partner, Jonathan. At what moment did you decide, I have to write, I have to write my story? Um, well, it sort of developed. Um, I never set out to necessarily write a full length play. Um, Jonathan passed away suddenly in um, 2013, um, and I say suddenly, um, uh, yeah, it was very unexpected, and um, it left uh, me with um, a lot of uh, things I wish I had said and things I wish I had heard. Um, anybody who's gone through the, uh, you know, the grief journey. Um, who continues to go through the grief journey, I'm sure feels that. Um, so it hit me very, very hard. Um, and as an artist, as a writer, um, I needed to express that grief. And for me, it's a lot easier uh, to put my thoughts on pa paper than uh, speak them. And um, so I, I started off just because I needed to get to get this um, these feelings out and you know, for the first couple of years after I lost Jonathan, it, it was a lot of um, personal journals and um, uh, I think bad poetry, but um, uh, it was all a way to express myself um, and to get those feelings out. Um, and like I said, at, at some point, there are some things I wish I had said and um, things I wish or I hope that he knew. Um, and I needed that dialogue. I needed that dialogue, even though Jonathan was no longer here. And uh, as a playwright, um, I write dialogue. So I started doing that as sort of an exercise. And uh, before long, it, you know, it, it, it became more than just uh, an exercise about grief. Um, it became uh, something that I wanted to share. Um, and so what started off as, you know, a few pages of dialogue developed into a, a full story that, that um, I wanted to share that's based a lot on, on uh, my experience with Jonathan and my experiences uh, growing up uh, with a disability. Um, for your viewers who can't see down there, um, I identify as um, a disabled male. Um, I use crutches and uh, leg braces for mobility. Um, and that's a big impact of who I am. Um, so that fed into uh, the story. Um, but yeah, that's that's how it started. Was just a personal reflection and needing to have that dialogue that you know you don't get to have when you lose a loved one suddenly. Yeah, and you're it's such a beautiful um, way to way to say goodbye. You know, to be able to process what you weren't able to say. You know, as, as a reader, I was oh, I'm like, don't cry, don't cry. I was really touched by by your book um 
you you show vulnerability oh so vulnerable um and i'm always curious with with um writers who do share their their nonfiction, their work in that sense um what when did you decide like i really do have to share this because it's one thing when it's a therapeutic process but to take it out to the public and in such a powerful way in you know the visual play medium and then now in a published book when were you like i've got to share this like i know i can help people um i think i think when you're grieving um it's why we have, um, you know, people do so well. I did so well in like support groups, uh, um, therapy, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, you, uh, and also because um, things have changed so significantly for you when you lose a loved one, mm -hmm. you know, the world looks different. The, uh, mm -hmm. I remember after Jonathan passed the way, um, not long after, like I, I was getting a shower in, um, in, in our house um, and the water felt different to me um it was that sort of thing like your whole world has shifted but you get up in the morning and the rest of the world is just carrying on like it's you know it's just another day um i felt the need to express how much my world has changed through loss um yeah i felt the need to do that and i think a lot of people who go through the grief need to share that with mm -hmm. each other and like i said through um through groups or or supportive friends and family um and i think like my my advice to anybody who's, who's wondering you know we always it's still today me too you don't know what to say you know you feel awkward when someone loses someone and you know what there are no right words but just the acknowledgement that mm -hmm. i know you are hurting um it's yeah. really helps uh in that grief journey yeah yeah yeah. And I'm after forgetting, I'm after going off now, I'm after forgetting what your original question was. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's per, and it's actually a perfect segue into my next question, because um, your play has been, well, very well received, as has your book. Um, did you know that you would connect so well with, with the audience on, the, on this one? No, like, especially before, you know, we actually performed it before and the the uh, accolades and everything that i'm so grateful for um the coolest thing um i love people come up to me um and give me hugs and uh they say um how well i have um captured grief and what you feel when you're grieving and what you feel when you're you know you're trying to go on with your life and yeah you, you have this you have this struggle of you know you want partly want to stay there in grief and not move on you know because yeah. well at least for me staying in that grief at least kept me closer to Jonathan uh, in my mind right so yeah. um that moving on which is a lot of what the play is about as well mm -hmm. um is important and so many people came up and in, in tears and everything um shared with me um people they have lost um yeah it's uh it became more of a less about me and more about that universal um, grief that, you know, sometime in our lives, we're all going to experience that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, it's part of life. Um, but uh, yeah, the uh, outpour of love and hugs and tears uh, from audience members after it, that, that means so much to me. And it means so much to me as a writer, you know, to be able to reach people like that and, uh, have them feel what I was feeling or the character is feeling and yeah. what I meant to share. Yeah. And, you know, as a re I can't, I, the power of that on the stage would, would be incredible. And as a, as a reader, I mean, visually I was, I was there with you. Like I could picture all the conversations and, you know, down by the water when, when there's con the, with, uh, yeah, it's, it's a really powerful, powerful book. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, I'm going to kind of take a step back here. So when you wrote your first stage play in the 90s, there was there was no diversity on on the stage. And you've written about having a dual role as creator versus advocate. Can you share how you've come to embrace both of these roles? 
Uh, sure. Yeah, you're right. Um, when I was back in university and um, uh, just starting out writing, uh, I, st I studied English uh, theater in university. Um, so a lot of a lot of works and was involved in, in theater um, in those days as well. Um, uh, but I never found or very little of a my life experience, you know, of living with a physical disability, um, nor did I see anybody on stage. I was very lucky here in Newfoundland. Um, I used to go out and audition for roles and I would, you know, get cast. And um, it was never like, it was never a, a disabled role. And um, I was fortunate enough that back in the 90s, which this was rare, about forward thinking directors and uh, who cast me on, um, so there was diversity there, but I always, but I was the only one um, yeah. I could see on the surface. Um, but uh, yeah, but I didn't see the disability story, especially in Newfoundland. Um, I know um, through uh, my studies and that you know there there are there were pockets of diversity, but um, I didn't see my story. So uh, meaning as a man with a disability, so. I didn't see it and I certainly didn't see it in local works. So I decided to write my own. And um, yeah. that was my first foray into, into writing uh, a play. Um, and I discovered I love, I love writing dialogue. So uh, that sort of opened that yeah. door to writing, uh, writing plays. But also um, it became more and more important to me to have that representation on stage. Um, because we still don't see it often. And when we do see it, and I mean diversity on stage with uh, people who identify as, as having a disability, when we do see it, it still makes the headlines, you know? It's still, it's still newsworthy. And that's because it's still rare. Um, and uh, I want to get to a point where it's not newsworthy, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, so, what I love about Tripled and, uh, well, I guess, yeah, most of my works, which ha has that uh, uh, disability in it, is it asks for a, um, if you're producing it, it asks for uh, someone who identifies with a disability to be cast in the role, to keep that, um, keep that uh, lived experience as part of the performance that the actor would bring to the production. Um, but even, even if it's not produced, in, in, if, you're, if you're just reading the play, um, it's that disability voice is still there. That's all very important to me uh, for representation because I don't think we'll make a difference in the arts. You know, you're not going to aspire to be something if you don't see it. So mm -hmm. it's important this to have on the stage and off the stage too, that diversity in production and acting and all that stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, what advice would you have for an aspiring playwright? Um, just write. Yeah. Um, yeah. Be genuine in what you're writing. Um, if you have a story to share, uh, don't be afraid to share it. Um, even as, if it's for yourself beginning. Um, and make sure you are writing for the right reasons. Meaning, generally, you have a story to share and feel strongly about it. Um, and always, you know, that old adage: uh, "Write what you know." Um, all of us has, have a story in us, um, even when you don't think you do. You do. Um, yeah. That's a great jumping-off point: is writing what you know. You know, a life experience, yeah. um, that sort of thing, and. Um, Read plays. <laughs> read plays. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I learned that pretty early on, you know. That how can I write a play when I, I haven't, you know, you haven't experienced what's out there. So, um, yeah. Paul, what's next for you? Well, I'll do a plug here now because uh, yes. we are performing, <laughs> we are performing <laughs> Crippled. Uh, thank, hopefully, you know, uh, it's been such a, you know, a couple of years, hard years for everybody, especially the arts community and, and the pandemic. But it uh, looks like it's all going ahead. We're performing Crippled at a theater past Mirai in Toronto in um, May. And uh, we've been invited to, uh, to the National Arts Center to perform 
in July. So uh, we're really excited about that to get it back on stage. Um, on the writing side, uh, I'm, I'm working on something right now um, uh, about a, a, a generational thing and the impact of dementia um, on uh, families. And uh, my father is inspiration. Um, uh, so I'm trying to, uh, yeah, I'm working on that, which uh, it's another, <laughs> it's another tearjerker maybe, but uh, it's, uh, <laughs> It's another one of those uh, personal impact stories. I don't think I will act in this one, but um... yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so br we'll we'll bring our Kleenex box. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'll just be in the audience with you, though. I, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul David Power, thank you so much for being a guest on All About Canadian Books, and it's just been an absolute pleasure to meet you, to get to know you, and to hear you discuss the story behind your book, Crippled. Thank you so much. Uh, wonderful interview. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for promoting writers. <laughs> oh, it, it, it's a pleasure. I love promoting writers. I, I find it inspiring myself. And for our viewers, I will put links down below in the description box so you can purchase a copy of Crippled. And also, Paul, we'll get some links for um, where the play is going to be played so everyone can, uh, where the play is going to be played, help, where you're <laughs> playing. I understood that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So people can purchase tickets as well. It's a great. great book and a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much, Paul. Oh, thank you, Crystal. Bye, everyone. <laughs>